You're listening to The Evening Sacrifice. Be blessed as you listen. Oh, Lord of glory, we thank you this evening that we have come again. Hallelujah. To participate in the blood of sprinkling, in the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you for the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the sprinkling of the blood of our soul, of our mind, of our bodies. Hallelujah. Thank you for the power in the blood of Jesus. The power in the blood of Jesus is against the power of death. The power in the blood of Jesus is against the power of Satan. The power in the blood of Jesus is against the power of oppression. The power in the blood of Jesus is against the power of sorcery and wickedness. The power in the blood of Jesus preserves us. Hallelujah. We receive the effectual working of this power. As we receive forgiveness for any sin we have sinned today. Anything we have spoken against you or against our fellow men today. Father, we receive the forgiveness that you have for us in the blood. Thank you, Father. We are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. We are preserved by the blood of Jesus. We overcome by the blood of Jesus. I speak for the blood. The blood of Jesus over us. The blood of Jesus over the atmosphere. The blood of Jesus over our homes. The blood of Jesus over our children. The blood of Jesus over our marriages. The blood of Jesus over the works of our hands. The blood of Jesus upon us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. First Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. From verse 8, I read, Whom have we not seen your love? Whom are we talking about here? Jesus Christ. We haven't seen him, but we love him. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. My brother, my sister, one of the things that I know is lacking today is the joy of salvation. And we want to bring that back. There are things that are giving people joy outside of salvation. When they have new cars, when things are going well and going good. But what about the joy of salvation? Just looking into your spirit and seeing that into your life, into your heart, your inner man, knowing that you have the Lord, that you are a child of God, that God has saved you from eternal condemnation, saved you from the lake of fire, that God has redeemed your soul. Hallelujah. And Jesus, Jesus is your savior. What a joy. What a joy. What a joy to know that we are called beloved. Now are we the sons of God. We know that now we are the sons of God. We are the children of God. We lift our face, we lift up our voice and we cry, Abba Father. Now are we the sons of God. Praise God. The Bible says that this joy is inexpressible and it is full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of of your souls praise god so our faith journey on the earth has an end okay our faith journey on the earth has an end and the end of our faith journey on the earth is the salvation of our souls hallelujah and somebody will say i thought we are already saved yes salvation began in our spirit man okay the word spirit man is the word pneuma the word soul here is the word suke praise god now, suke is the Greek word for soul, translated soul in English language. And the soul needs to experience the same salvation that the spirit man has experienced. Hallelujah. Praise God. So it is when that program, the program of salvation that entered into our spirit is extended to our soul. That we have come to the end of our faith journey. Okay? You know, Paul said, I have finished my course. And he, he finished that salvation program. I have graduated from university. I am now a medical doctor. Why? You finish, you completed the course load, the coursework. Now, the coursework, there is a coursework 
for our faith upon the earth. And that coursework, when it is expounded, it is meant to deliver salvation to our souls. What does it mean? It means that the different faculties of a man's existence that is comprised in the soul, my heart, my mind, my will, my emotions, praise God, my desires, the faculty of a man that desires things, which is tied to the heart, okay? My intellect, for what? Analysis, reasoning. Now, all of these need to receive the life of Jesus, okay? Now, how, what does receiving the life of Jesus mean to my mind, mean to my intellect? So that when I'm reasoning out things, I reason them out in the light of the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So I come to conclusions that does not give me the mindset of the wicked, the mindset of the unbeliever, but gives me the mind of Christ. I'm able to reason out and come to a conclusion or a decision to do or not to do because it's exactly what is in the mind of Christ. Now, when we are trained, our hearts, our hearts, you know, the desires that come out of our hearts, oh God, okay, are free from jealousy, free from covetousness, free from envy, free from malice, free from bitterness. The heart is experiencing salvation. Now God wants all the faculties of the inward man to taste what has happened to our spirit, Numa. So Bible is saying that the end of our faith is the salvation of our soul. So our salvation program is not complete at new birth alone. It is the beginning of our faith. The beginning of our faith. So that's why when people teach once saved, always saved, mm -mm, that is wrong. Once saved, always saved. You can't be once saved, always saved and then you are doing sin. You are doing things that are not okay. Your mind is not renewed. You are going in a way, in a course that God has not ordained or written for you. No, you will suffer loss. You will suffer loss. And if you're not careful, sin will creep in and the deceitfulness of sin can take you back to your state before you receive Jesus. And you'll be shocked at the manner of man you will become. Right? And the end of that man is eternal condemnation. Don't go in that direction. Let's not go in that direction. Let's follow after faith. Let's follow after our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's follow after the teachings of righteousness. Hallelujah. Let's be purified by the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you? Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. This is beautiful. So this salvation, the prophets prophesied it. Okay? That's what the scripture is saying. They prophesied it. But the people who prophesied it didn't even understand what they were prophesying. Have you ever read Isaiah? Isaiah was written how many thousands of years before Jesus came? The incredible writings of Isaiah, the incredible writings of Zechariah, the incredible writings of Ezekiel or Jeremiah or even David in the book of Psalms and Moses in the law and the prophets. All the things that they prophesied about how we will come to Christ, how the Gentiles will come to Christ, the glorification of the Gentiles, the second coming of the Lord. How we will be brought near. How we will be purged from our sins. It's all prophesied. The Bible says that they looked into them. And they searched for the time when these things would be. When the spirit of Christ which was in them signified that the time. They looked for that time. They looked forward. I am sure many of them desired to be alive at that time. To be a part of this company of people. That the spirit of God will live inside of them. Hallelujah. That God will forgive them all their iniquity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bible says, it says, searching what? Verse 11 again. Or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. When he testified beforehand, the sufferings of Christ. You see, so there was a testimony of the sufferings of Christ. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 53. 
For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we were healed. David, Professor David said, They pierced my hands. They pierced my feet. David prophesied many horrible things that would have happened to Jesus. And then one day David prophesied. He said, What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you have visited him? For you made him a little lower than angels. And now you have glorified him. Hallelujah. And put him in dominion over all the works of your hands. It wasn't just about the natural man that David was looking at. David was prophesying about Jesus. Okay. Whom he saw in the spirit. Praise God. And saw the sufferings of Jesus. How he was made a little lower than angels for the purpose of death. And now glorified Lord of glory. King of glory at resurrection. Son of the living God. Hallelujah. And the glory that will follow after that. What is that glory? You and I becoming children of God. Glory to God. You and I becoming sons of God. You that were enemies of God. Being now reconciled to God the Father. This is the glory of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. The message you just heard was from the Evening Sacrifice by Chinira Isibor from Kebadula Ministries. For other ministrations like Open Book, Preparing His Bride, and more, visit kebadula.org. God bless you.